Welcome to Govs TV and 91.9 Public Affairs. I'm Micah Terrell. Just how safe are campuses across the state and here at Austin P? Well, a recent report from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation gives us a better idea. It indicates that crime reports overall have gone up, gone up slightly. Now, joining me here to break down the numbers is Austin P Police Chief Michael Kazich. Chief, thank you for making time to stop by with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, the overall crime reports, it says here, uh, went up about 0.8% in 2016. And it says here about that means about 6,158 incidents uh, in that year compared to 6,000. 111 in 2015. Now, what do you think this increase means overall about crime on campus? I don't think it's a significant increase. Um, there may be an awareness uh, by the communities to report crimes uh, that they normally wouldn't report, but for the most part, that that's such a small rise in in the number of reported crimes. Next year, we could see a slight decrease in the number of reported crimes. That would be the same amount of insignificant uh, change. Right, so not very much, but we did see some areas saw some, some significant decreases, which I wanted to talk to you about next. For instance, in the area of rape and sexual assault, it's, uh, the report indicates that that went down more than 25%, which is pretty pretty large uh, drop. But why do you think that might be, and why do you think we still need to remain vigilant in this area? Well, one reason might be that universities have a big push uh, about sexual assault prevention. Um, sexual assault is one of those areas that's always underreported, so there's no true way to gauge uh, how many are actually occurring. But especially on our campus, we have a sexual assault response team programming committee. And so throughout the whole entire year, this committee is planning events and, and advertising them and pushing them out to the community for sexual assault and rape awareness and prevention. And do you think, um, it seems like those are helping with, you know, maybe helping people keep in the, the forefront of their minds that, hey, this is something we need to be vigilant about. And also the rape culture, I noticed um, we have the Govs Mean Respect um, campaign as well. How do you think those are also kind of helping too? I think they're helping. It's bringing awareness to an issue. Um, it, it hasn't completely solved it. And I'm, I'm still sure that there are people that, that are not reporting and not seeking help through us. And what we want to do is, to let people know that we're not just, you know, it's not just doing a criminal investigation that we're trying to do. Um, that's completely up to the survivor of, of the sexual assault. What we want people to do is to get help that they need to, uh, sorry, um, to get the help that they need. So bringing awareness to the services that we have here on campus, um, such as the counseling center and the programs that we do through through Student Affairs, as well as the Rape Crisis Center here in Clarksville. Right, and those are very helpful and, and help a lot. And also, we don't want to forget about prevention, too, that that's, those are always um, helpful also. What are some uh, things that people can, maybe in their behaviors going out and about, can kind of help themselves be uh, avoid uh, being part of that? Well, and we never want to blame somebody that no. when something happens to them. But, you know, there are preventive me measures that people can take. One of the ways is to take a buddy with you. Um, it sounds kind of old-fashioned, but, you know, if, if, if you get in a situation and somebody else is watching out for you, they can help you get you out of it before it becomes a bigger issue. Um, if you're out at a party or at a bar drinking, one of the most important things is never accept a drink from a stranger. Never accept an open drink. Um, if you set your drink down, go get a new one. Um, you, never you never know if somebody's going to put something in your drink or what happens. If you see your friend getting out of control, Help them out. Try to get them to see that, that maybe things need to calm down a little bit or you might need to go somewhere else to, to kind of get some space and uh, that might prevent something. Yeah, but I think the key here is again, just don't go out alone because that's going to really put you at risk, right? Right. Now let's talk about some areas which actually did see increases, uh, though like assaults went up about 20%. Uh, what do you think might behind, be behind that increase and how can we protect ourselves from these? Well, most of the assaults we see here on our campus are acquaintance assaults. Um, you know, people get into a conflict and they know who, who it is, so it's not a stranger thing. Uh, the most important thing there is to understand when things start getting out of control. It might be best to remove yourself from the situation rather than escalating. Right. Now also robbery, uh, which we want to remind people is different from a burglary, uh, went up about 16%. What can mm -hmm. people do to protect themselves on, on robberies? Well, the most important thing is be aware of your surroundings. Um, as you're walking around, notice people around you. Uh, if something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. Find another way to walk. 
call somebody, um, but, but know what's going on and be prepared to change your actions as things are going on. If you see that something doesn't feel right and someone's approaching you, are you, are you prepared to, to run in a different direction? Um, one of the things that we've introduced recently was the LiveSafe app uh, that you can put on your smartphone. So if something seems to be happening, you can activate that so that you can have help on the way uh, as the situation's unfolding. Right, and if you, if you don't have the app, then we also do have the blue light boxes too, which... But, yes, and most places on campus, when you're near a blue light call box, you can see another blue light call box. So we, we've done, we've tried to place them uh, in that fashion, but as the campus has grown, we understand that there are some areas that that that's not exactly true, which is why we supplement with the LiveSafe app. Yeah, and the app is very helpful and easy, free, free to get, yes, and everything. It is. Great. Now, fraud is another area that spiked up some, about eight percent, and mo it was mostly like the false pretense, con uh, conning, and swindling types of of uh, schemes that people used. Now, what should we all do on campus to be watchful about this? Um, just understand that. First of all, if you get an email that seems too good to be true, it is. Don't ever send personal information through email to anyone unless you've verified who they are and, and why you're sending it to them. Uh, the big scam right now is the IRS is calling people and threatening them with arrest if they don't pay right away. And those are very strong arm tactics. Uh, the IRS, the police, we won't accept payment in lieu of arresting somebody. Um, so if, if you get one of those phone calls, hang up. Uh, if the police really do have a warrant for you, they're going to come get you. And it's, it's not going to be what you see on TV where they kick in the door and, and put everybody on the ground or whatever. They're going to come and knock on your door and say, we have a warrant for your arrest. And it's going to be very, it's going to be a peaceful exchange. Um, it's not, we don't threaten people when it comes to that, those types of activities. And if the IRS wants money from you, don't they typically send you a letter in the mail, right? They'll send you a letter and <laughs> right. they'll, they'll go through the audit process. Right. They have processes in place. They don't, they don't act like collection agencies and, mm -hmm. and get mean and yell at you. Right, exactly. Now, what about theft and larceny? Um, the numbers went down, but they may still made up about a quarter of all the crimes that were reported, so still a big chunk of them. They were mostly thefts from buildings. What should we keep in mind about that? Always, always. And we've talked about this many times in the past. Never leave your stuff laying around. Always mm -hmm. secure it. If you're in the library and you're, you have to go find books or you have to run to the restroom, don't leave your laptop laying around. It's going to walk away. Um, when you go to the bookstore, they don't allow you to take your backpack in. Don't drop it on the floor because you don't want to take the time to secure it in one of the free lockers. Always secure your belongings so that nobody can walk off with it. Yeah, and even though it might seem, you know, inconvenient to have to carry your stuff with you, it's just, I think people get that false sense of security. You know, they just feel like, oh, everything will be fine, or, or they just don't think about it, maybe. That's right. Yeah. Now, narcotics offenses reported on state campuses also went up. Um, just about um, 850 cases in 2016, um, rather 2015, and then went up to about 1,000 or so in 2016. So why do you suspect this trend is happening? Uh, do you think it's a reflection of the overall op opioid problem in the state and in the nation? Well, I'm not real sure. But, you know, I know on our campus we've seen an increase in uh, marijuana use, and that might be contributed to where the, the changing culture mm -hmm. across our nation where some states have legalized the use of marijuana, it's still illegal in Tennessee. Um, so that could account for some of it, but we're not seeing the other issues. Um, we're not yet, we haven't seen that on the opioid problem on our campus yet. So that's, yeah, pain pills and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Got it. Now, uh, drunk driving and uh, drunkenness, public drunkenness uh, overall have dropped significantly, um, which is encouraging. Now, how do you think uh, programs at Austin Peay's campus have, have been helpful, um, maybe like, you know, or maybe even having driving services like Uber or Lyft maybe have helped with that? Well, I, you know, we do a good push on drunk driving prevention and awareness. But I think having the availability of services like Uber and Lyft have probably helped tremendously. Um, when you can go out and not have to worry about things, and you know, ta the traditional taxi cab doesn't seem to be working anymore. Mm -hmm. It was always slow and it was late, and just being able to catch a ride real quick uh, and and close to home for not too much money is is very helpful. Definitely. Now, what about the LiveSafe app? Let's talk about that again. How's it been doing? I see that um, we've seen some illegal parking tips have been sent in uh, to you guys. How, how's that going? 
It's good. We have over 900 users, and of course, at over at Govs Row during the summer and during the fall semester, we're going to do a big push to get more users. Um, but having that ability to report things to us anonymously uh, has helped. Now, we've had people report suspicious activity. We've had people report drug activity to us anonymously because their name's not attached to it. Um, and I think it's helping people feel like they can, they can you know, reach out to us and not have to be interrogated by us about what their observations are. Um, now, but the biggest increase we've had or the biggest uh, report we've had is on people parking where they're not supposed to. Um, it, it's really empowered people to, to tell us about where people are parking. Right, and that's, that's really, I mean, it kind of helps free up some of your officers who may you know, be dealing with some other more important things so they don't have to necessarily, you know, go check on the, the extra set of eyes, I guess, or extra sets of eyes, right? That's right. Now, also, how's the, the uh, app going with, like, the safe walks? Because that's another great free feature that people can use. Well, the safe walk is, is a really good feature of that app where people can ask their friends to watch them walk whether they have the app or not, and it tracks them, and they can, they can send messages back and forth. Um, I think we've had about 140 people or 140 safe walks. I don't know how many actual people are using it. All I can see is this, the statistics on it. But it's a great feature if you have to go from, let's say, Castle Heights to Harville Hall. And you don't want to wait for one of our safety escorts, um, but you don't feel safe walking by yourself. You can have that somebody virtually watch you walk across campus, tracking you by GPS and knowing that they'll contact somebody if if you seem to be in trouble. And uh, again, as we mentioned before, if you don't happen to have the app, there's still the boxes. You can always call, you know, and get help from the police department, right? That's correct. Great. Now, Chief, what other thoughts did you want to share about crime on campus um, today with us? Um, for, for us, if you look at our numbers, we stay pretty constant. We'll have a little fluctuation up and down. But for the most part, we do a good job of reporting suspicious activity. We do a good job of securing our stuff. I wish people would just, you know, not not think they're too safe because mm -hmm. that's that's when we have issues. Um, but the biggest thing is people being aware of their surroundings and notifying us when something doesn't look right. And that being aware is so important because right on the way to coming into this interview with you, I caught, saw two different people with their little headphones on, just kind of oblivious to the world around them. And that's pretty dangerous because maybe they couldn't hear the car that's coming by or, or something like that, right? Right. It's very important. You know, we talked about robbery earlier. And if your head's down and you've got earphones in and you're not sure, you're not really paying attention to what you're doing, it, it makes you an accessible target. Um, but there's other issues that are non-crime related. Walking out into a crosswalk, if your head is down, you're, you're texting. A lot of people walk and text and they've got earphones in and they just don't see that car coming. You know, the, the crosswalks are there and yes, you do have the right of way, um, but that doesn't stop a two-ton car mm -hmm. in, in such a short distance. So you need to be aware of your surroundings to make sure that, that you're keeping yourself safe. And by that same token, obviously the drivers, um, I did notice a few people, you know, have their phones out and they're not supposed to be texting and driving. No, they? texting and driving in Tennessee is illegal um, and it's extremely unsafe. Some people think it's more unsafe than drinking and driving. Any type of distracted driving uh, can have serious consequences. So that text can wait. That, that email can wait. Um, sometimes a phone call can wait. Uh, you know, so it's... It might be really convenient to quickly text, but that text can turn into something very, very fatal. Definitely can. Well, lots of good thoughts, uh, Chief. Thank you for, for checking in with us and, and sharing this. And again, um, that was the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation report that we looked at. So thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. And I'm Micah Terrell with 91.9 Public Affairs and Govs TV.